this is, this is, this is. Lego my ego. What is happening, everyone? It is the very last podcast of January, of January 2024. This year's already flying by. It's going to be crazy. We're going to make it, folks. We're going to make it through, but I don't know what's going to happen. All, all I do know is MXPX is going to be playing live. Um, we're going to be playing all over the place. MXPX and the Ataris is coming to New York City. That's right. Friday, February 9th. My daughter's, my first child's birthday, in fact. I'm, I'm missing her birthday for the love of the game. Let's go. Let's make it happen. So there's still some tickets available. Come see me. Come see Tom. Come see Yuri. Some, come see Chris. Uh, we're all going to be there. And uh, we have a, a great set plan for you. A bunch of our friends are coming out to New York, and it's just going to be a party. It really is. Um, it's going to be packed no matter what. It's going to look sold out. But it's not quite sold out yet. So go get your tickets if you haven't already got them. We would rather you get them than any kind of bots or scalpers or anything like that. So please, fans, people that actually want to see the show, get those tickets. MXPX.com for the tickets. And we're going to be there February 9th, Friday night in New York City. That's right. Can't wait for it. Um, and then the next night, we're going to be in Philadelphia. It's sold out. So thank you. Also invited and are expecting some friends to be coming out there. It's going to be great. And Philadelphia is has become a really, it always has been a really fun town. But um, I've spent a lot of time there between playing solo, playing, you know, MXPX over the years. We've done Warp Tour. I mean, Philadelphia is just fun. And so thank you. That's That show sold out months and months and months ago. Why? I don't know. I'm very boggled, but uh, thank you. Um, but New York City, still a couple of tickets left. Go get it. Where are we going to get pizza? Let's get some pizza. Maybe not together, but we'll agree that it'll be at the same place. So like, where's the best place that is in close proximity to the venue? Webster Hall, Manhattan, somewhere in Midtown. I don't know exactly where it is, but it's somewhere around there, not too far from Times Square, I think. Um, Man, I love New York. I love I love just walking through it. I love being part of it. I love playing New York. The crowds in New York are so much fun. They're so, ah, yeah, they're just like, there's some energy in the room every time. And, and New York City, for those that are wondering, um, the set times are going to be early. So MXPX isn't going to go on at 940 or 930 like we would a lot of times. We're going to go on at like 830 or somewhere in there. Some early, 8 o'clock, 8.30, 8.40. We're starting early. So I think that's due to the club having, you know, club night after the show and things like that. But for me, that's a great thing because people can get into the city. They can get out of the city at a reasonable time. Um, if there's parking in New York, they can get back to the parking lot before it closes, no problem. So, so the show will be over, I think, no later than 11. So pretty great um if we go on it if we go on it like 8 30 it's it's over by 10 you know so like you know then of course we uh for shows depending on the venue size um we'll do meet and greets and those are always free um and we appreciate you guys we just you know we'd like to show love we like to meet people and uh, it's not the same thing online. You know, you don't know who people are necessarily, but when you meet somebody that you've talked to online in person at a show, it's very cool. And, and and people that I've never even talked to online either, you know, I'll meet at a show and people will say, oh yeah, I love your podcast and thanks for doing that. And I'm just like, wow, people are actually listening to the podcast. It's kind of like a, oh yeah, that that's a thing. That's There's people actually listening and people that, not just my mom, you know, just somebody else is listening that I don't even know. So yeah, that's, that's always nice to hear and I appreciate you guys. So um, always feel free to say hello, uh, respectfully, of course, right? But yeah, feel free to say hello anytime you might see me. Um, so that's February. February 9th, February 10th, come out. New York City is going to be a blast. Uh, so is Philadelphia. Philadelphia, where are we eating Philly cheesesteaks? I mean, uh, is it Gino's? Is it, uh, is it Jerry's? Is it, you know, there's a bunch of other places probably by now that I don't even know about. You guys, please call in. Uh, let me know about pizza. Let me know about where we're going to eat some Philly cheesesteaks. 
And you can do that at this number, 360-830-6660. Pause the podcast so you don't forget. Call in right now. Tell me, okay, I'm coming to the New York show. This is the place that I think we should get pizza, blah, 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 blah. All right? Same thing with Philly. I'm coming to the Philly show. This is the place where everybody needs to try their Philly cheesesteak. And this is why. I would love to hear that. If I don't get any in the next couple of weeks, I understand. It's it's uh, But that's why I'm saying do it as soon as you hear it. Because this is going to be coming out uh, into January. And then there's only a week or a, a little over a week until the shows happen. So, all right. What's next? What's next? MXPX in Atlanta and Orlando. MXPX and the Ataris, for that matter. Um, at So, Atlanta at Buckhead Theater. That is March 15th on a Friday night. And then the next night, Saturday night, in Orlando, Florida, at Orlando House of Blues, March 16th. Tickets available for both shows. Selling great. It's going to be packed. But please, if you want to come, don't wait on those tickets. Come out and see us. Um... You never know. My buddy Louis DeFabrizio is probably going to be there. He said he would. Uh, you never can tell. But he's probably going to be in New York, too, to be honest. Um, a bunch of other friends are going to come out. Um, Orlando, I got some people. New York, Philly. Atlanta, I got a couple peeps. I got, some, you know, the old Joe Christmas guys. Some of those guys uh, still tattoo. And uh, those guys usually come out. So, yeah, it's, it's always fun. But i got to think of who else I'm – I'm sure I'm not thinking of a few friends that I'm still going to invite out uh, to Atlanta. But um, always call in. Call in and give me, my, give me some ideas, <laughs> all right? Um, sold out in Denver, April 5th. Sold out in Salt Lake City, April 6th. Thank you. Appreciate it. You guys are amazing. Um, there's tickets available for, for the Dirty South – so mxpeaks.com for that. I appreciate y'all. Um, if you haven't already done so, uh, please watch the video for Stay Up All Night. We really put a lot of work into that thing. And every time I see it, I'm like, man, that looks like a movie. That looks like straight up movie. And um, yeah, so I, I'm really, really happy with how it, how it came out. Anyway, uh, Joshua Schultz directed and, and made that, really made that happen. He, he worked his ass off on that. Um, video so stay up all night is in there and if you haven't already done so please add the new album to your music library to your playlists the new album's called mxpx find a way home and if you heard heard it one time or something maybe it wasn't for you please give it another couple listens i think my songs are best when you listen like seven times when if you still don't like it after seven times i believe you i almost just knocked my phone right off the desk but i caught it because you know fast re fast reflexes anyway <laughs> gosh i'm a wreck ah please add my record <laughs> mm. shout out to the dingies last week if you haven't already heard that lahaina uh maui basically just it, it erupted in flames at the end of august i don't remember the exact date maybe it was even early august uh, in 2023, and Bean, the bass player of the Dingies, lived there, and he was there. He was he was at home at the time. He wasn't working. He worked he worked at a resort, and uh, he, he tells the story. And it was it was amazing to hear. And that was last week. So if you haven't already checked that out, please do. Um, the Dingies have a new EP out called Drop Seeds. Um, man, very very cool to hear from those guys. And the fact that nothing's really been done and, and the media isn't talking about Lahaina and the, those fires. And, and, uh, I think the residents were given $700, $700, here, your whole house burned down, your whole town burned down. Here's $700. And then you've got, you know, I don't know, I don't know how many billions, 30 billion or third, probably more than that at, at this point, but billions and billions of dollars going overseas to different wars and whether or not things are justified, it, it, that's not my concern here. My concern is we've got these people in Maui. These are Americans. These are our people. And they needed our help. And they still need our help. And they're being displaced all over different islands. It's just wild. And to me, it's just not right. It's just not right. So I just... 
I, I just wanted to mention that again. If you haven't heard Bean's story, um, it, he he wasn't complaining. He he didn't have. I've heard some other stories that were really bad, and people just escaped barely, you know, with their lives. Bean um, he got out okay, but it was still not easy, and the fact that he's just living in a hotel and he's trying to find work and he's doing what he can. But I mean, the life he had is gone. It's gone. And, and will it, are they going to rebuild that town? It's not going to be the same. And, and of course we know that and that's, that's heartbreaking, but let's do something. Let's build that place back up. And it shouldn't just be people, citizens that care. It should be, this government that we've paid into our whole lives, we've paid into our whole lives, not only through taxes, but, you know, we, we, we pay taxes on things we buy constantly. So like, we're just constantly being taxed on these things. I'm not an anti-taxer guy. Like, I mean, sure, I'm definitely pro-anarchy in a lot of ways, but uh, I realize that we have to have the system in some ways to survive. And I use the system when I can. And, and, but for the most part, like, we're paying into something that we're not really getting much from. And, and, and it's evidenced by when things like Lahaina happens and all these people are displaced and they get $700. Thanks. Sure. So it's insurance companies holding their, holding people's feet to the fire, you know, making them continue to pay their, their insurance claims, even in their insurance premiums, even though they are filed a claim and they're trying to get paid for a claim, the insurance companies are like, no, 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 but you still have to pay us monthly, you still have to pay us monthly, like, things like that, it just seems so unjust, and, you know, I, I feel like with MXPX, we've always, we've always tried to recognize that the world is so unjust, um, but be a refuge from it. Be a refuge from it. And, and and not all their songs are always happy. I know that. But the songs that are positive, the songs that do have a message that encourages you to keep going, that's always what I want to keep listening to, those, those types of songs. I mean, I do love a sad song. Believe me, I do. But I find myself more and more as this, as the world gets darker, that I want a positive, I want to, to, to put forth a positive message. And, and it doesn't mean I don't care about politics and I don't care about social, you know, social issues and society and our culture. I do. But I care more about making the individual happy because not everybody, I, it's such a, I could dwell on all the things that I do wrong. I could dwell on all of the ways that I'm not good at what I do, that I'm that I don't write good songs, that I'm not a good singer, that I'm not a great player. I could dwell on all of that. Or I could say, you know what? No one can do what I can do the way I can do it. No one else is Mike Herrera in the way that I'm Mike Herrera. I know there's other Mike Herreras out there. I've met a few. But that always makes me happier and it gives me a better perspective on life rather than putting myself down all the time, right? So for me, I'm like, okay, if I feel better when I'm encouraging, when I'm writing songs that are more encouraging, what's wrong with just having some restraint, being positive? I mean... I'm not saying we shouldn't be negative. Like we should, we should point out things. We should notice things. We should not just notice them, but mention them. At the same time, I feel like there, there's always a time and place for that. And sometimes the time is now. And even sometimes the time is on a podcast, but I look back and go, okay, what is my, what is, what's the reason people listen to this podcast? Is it because they want to hear just me talk off the top of my head some somewhat maybe but i don't think it's always that i think it's ultimately usually somebody's a fan of mxpx or somehow got 
into my biosphere, my world. And that could be, it's usually through MXPX, to, to be honest, but it could be through my solo stuff, my solo performances. But those songs, I mean, MXPX songs I write, solo songs I write, it, it's all, it's all, anything I write sounds a little bit like me, even the Tumble Down stuff, uh, Tumble Down, my, my other band that is on hiatus, long hiatus. Um, it still sounds like me. It's not MXPX, but it's got a tinge to it, right? You, you hear that? You, know, you hear a tinge. And so uh, no matter how you, you find this podcast, I wonder what the, the underlying current of my, this is my favorite type of podcast. And I don't ask you that because, oh, well, I'll just do those types of podcasts then. No, I think I, think I, like, I like how, how it is now and, and how I go through phases of different types of podcast episodes. Um, but I think all podcasts that I've listened to over the years have always gone through phases. And sometimes you don't like those phases and you might fall off on a few episodes and then you come back to it and you're like, okay, this is cool too, you know, whatever. Um, I've done that. I do that all the time. But I think as the podcast host, as the creator, whatever, I this is literally just another creative outlet for me. It's something, it's, it's a way to communicate. It's a way to stay connected with some friends. It's a way to stay connected with your audience, your audience. I say your audience, meaning anybody that does a podcast can connect to their audience. Um, it's interesting, though, because... As I do the podcast over the years, you know, I started this in 2013. So it's been over 10 years. It's been 11 years. Wow. Um, I'm not one for like throwing a big party when there's a anniversary or a birthday or this or that. Like, of course, my kids get birthday parties and stuff like that. And we take, take my parents out to dinner or lunch or, or something for, for their birthdays. But, you know, overly like... I'm good. Like, I don't need to worry about that because like, I feel like that's in the past even, the, but so many people are so opposite of that. I'm not, I'm, I'm opposite of, of so many people in that regard. I'm not saying my way is right. Uh, I think I am a little bit of a robot in the, in where I'm just, once it's past, I'm done with it. I'm only thinking of the future. I only, I only think about the past things when I'm trying to think of things to write about. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So, hmm. so keeping it positive is very important to me. Um, not because I'm always positive, but because I'm I'm wanting to give people that. I don't want to say as a gift because it's that sounds like I'm giving myself something or something. But like I want to be consistent with the podcast in at least the fact that. I'm not bitching all the time. Like I, you, like early podcast days, I almost started the podcast basically so that I could have a place to bitch. Like people will write these rants on Facebook and it's so annoying to normal people when they read because they're just like, these people are just trauma dumping all over the internet with all their problems. I don't like reading it because it just gets me down and it's just like, what am I supposed to like? Oh, I'm so sorry that you're having a bad day, this blah, blah, blah. Well, like I started a podcast almost to like have a place where I could express myself in, in a way, tr you know, not trauma dump. I'm not, I'm not in trauma. I'm just, you know, whatever. I'm having a, a great time, but you know what I mean? I, to talk about things, to, to express my ideas, to express how I'm feeling, to express things that make me mad. And, and I would go off on rants and, and I'm sure that I will not and don't ever go back and listen to my old episodes for the same reasons why I said, I'm just not an anniversary guy. I, I don't listen to the old, I don't listen to it. I don't listen to it. Once it's recorded, I'll listen to the first bit just to make sure it sounds all right. <laughs> and I'll listen through it now and again if I if there's a reason to, but I don't listen back to it. And, and that's probably a flaw because I know that listening back to yourself, you can learn a lot. And I do listen back to live shows, some of, some of them, um, you know, but not all of them, you know, usually if I've screwed something up badly, I'll listen back to that. <laughs> but uh, I haven't been listening. And I didn't listen back to the, the, 
to the um, the last show we did in LA at the Palladium. So that was epic. It was great. I didn't I didn't watch it to relive the moments, but I've got the full thing on video. We've got it, you know. But um, anyway, I'm kind of getting off off kilter here. Um, podcast is meant to just be an outlet for creativity, an outlet uh, to let people know about new music, not only my own, but others. Next week, I'm going to do a huge Music Monday, so stay tuned for that. Um, and sorry, I got to get rid of this. This uh, I was gonna I was gonna read. <laughs> I'm still gonna read. I'm gonna read a, a comment or two off of the My Career Podcast group because, well, because I wanted to read a couple. Um, one was from William Thatcher. She says, really appreciate hearing you talk about how you manage pressure for shows like the Palladium. Was wondering how you do that. Preparation is key and everyone was ready and on point. And by the way, you were so right when you told me I have a fresh start ahead of me. Wow. Well, thanks for writing that. That's perfect in, in what we were just talking about with the Palladium and how I didn't even look back because I just felt so good about how the show went that I didn't feel the need to, you know, look at the game tape. I think I will eventually, but not in the same way, not in the way of like, how, what can I fix? I'm just going to be looking at it in what can I use for a clip or this or that. But, but I think, um, yeah, I think um, there's levels to performing and, in, and, in, in, we've hit that next level, whatever is next for us. We've hit another level in our performance, in our live shows. So anytime you see MXPX in 2024, it is going to be a step above what you're used to. Um, so man, New York city, here we come. It's going to be great. Uh, thanks for writing in William. That's on the, my career podcast, Facebook group. Um, you can follow me anywhere. My career podcast on Instagram, my career pod on, on Twitter X. Um, Mike Herrera, just Mike Herrera on TikTok. And then, um, of course, my personals. But but where I usually get these comments and where you can also submit a YouTube link if you want to be part of Music Monday, um, you do that on the Facebook message group. All right, let me do one more. One more um, from the Facebook group. And then we'll get into some voicemails. All right, this is from... Well, this is from Critically Disdained. Hey, Mike, I had a question. My wife and I did a review of Find a Way Home when it came out. I know you're super busy, so you may not have time to watch it, but I was wondering if you maybe could give it a shout out on the podcast sometime. I'll link the review here. Love the new album. It's fantastic. Keep up the good work. Critically Disdained. Um, the video is uh, titled in-depth album review colon mxpx new release find a way home and i'll put the link in the in the um show notes so people can find it um i did not watch the full 24 minutes and 22 seconds of video but I watched a little bit and you guys are cute wow i love your 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 mxpx decorations on the wall um You've got South Band of San Antonio, our live album right there, which is an amazing vinyl record. Um, came out at a weird time, and not a lot of people know that it has a lenticular cover that actually the Poconacha Punk crowd surfs on it, and it moves when you move the record. It's really cool. So let's play just a little tiny bit of, of this review. Button, let us know. Here we go. This record kickstarted a new era for MXPX. They had revitalized their career back in 2018 with the release of their self-titled album and this new record, Find A Way Home. They've done a few things new and exciting that I don't believe any other band has ever done before. When you've been a band as long as they have, you have to find a way of not only uh, keeping your loyal fans happy, but drawing in new ones. And one of the things that they did excellent with is over the last few years, they have perfected the live stream concert. And I know that that had a huge play in how they ended up um, 
and how they ended up streaming uh, this new record. So they decided to, to stream the entire record from start to finish in real time, not only on their YouTube channel, but on other YouTube channels of friends and bands that they have made over the years. Um, they've been a band for around 30 years now, and so they've made a lot of connections with a whole bunch of different bands. And so they reached out to these guys, people like Bowling for Soup, Less Than Jake, Reliant K, and all of them live streamed their live stream while they live streamed the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so funny. All right, you guys, um, thank you so much for doing that. And and they go into it in detail. And and some of their opinions maybe are not actually my opinion on what certain songs may be about, but that's the beauty of it is like they have their own sort of interpretation on the songs. And, and this came out right after the album came out pretty soon after, I think um, it says four months ago. So that sounds about right. Um, thank you for doing that. Yeah, uh, there's a bunch of different album reviews that you'll find once you go to here. You can look at other album reviews if you're if you're an album review type person. I appreciate uh, critically disdained both you and your wife for uh, just weighing in on on it and and just the the kind words. Appreciate it. Um, you guys weren't you didn't hate it. Let's let's put it that way. You didn't hate it. So uh, uh, I don't hate you either. I love you guys and uh, everybody. Go check it out. I'll put the YouTube link right up on my show notes all right what else let's get to i think we're ready i think we're ready for some voicemails let's talk about it let's get into it let's make it happen let's do it here we go um i'm going to find it first here we go here's the first one your voicemails 360-830-6660. 360-830-6660. Hey, Mike. My name is Ryan. I live over in Kirkland, Washington. Grew up in Muckleteo, Washington. And I'm uh, a high school choir teacher over in Bellevue, Washington. And uh, just been a huge fan for years and years. Started in 2002 with 10 years of running. Worked backwards and then have continued to, to follow you since then. Um, and you're just always such a cool down to earth guy. Just wanted to say thank you. Like, briefly have met you literally just saying like, hi, thank you. And by merch and head out, um, a couple of times over the years. But anyway, thank you for always being so like genuine. You're such a great dude. Um, question is kind of nerdy being like a music teacher. Um, listening to the, the records as the years go on, I hear who, not cooler, but like maybe a little more like intricate things with harmonies and uh, form and things with the songwriting. So I'm just curious to know like how and where do you pick up new ideas as far as like chord progressions and um, lyric ideas, melodic ideas uh, for your songwriting? Are there people that you've worked with who have shown you different tricks or are there... um, certain places you've gone to learn different concepts, things like where the inspiration comes from, or you're just trying stuff and all this is cool. Um, Anyway, just curious to pick your brain and and hear your thoughts on that. Thanks so much for everything you do. Love MXPX, love you and all the projects, Goldfinger, everything. Anyway, thanks for kicking ass and keep doing what you do, man. Thanks. Thanks for the call. Yeah, that's a great question. What, uh, what do I, how do I f- keep it fresh for me, I guess? Um, uh, how do I find new riffs? How do I find new ideas? What's the inspiration? Do people show me? Um, thinking about this and I think I get it from osmosis mostly. Um, just anything I pick up kind of seeps in accidentally um like a justin bieber melody or a something like that might might sneak in there but that can change your form over the years without i'm not trying to change i'm just trying to come up with a good idea that isn't exactly like the idea i've already come up with and isn't exactly like an idea i've already heard from another artist so there's a lot of artists that won't even if if 
maybe they don't know they're ripping something off, but like they heard a riff and now they're doing it. Like maybe they heard a pink song and they don't realize it, but they're doing the main riff and then they put out their song and it's their one of their singles and they're like, people are like, that sounds like a pink song. Like what? You know, like, and they're like, what? what are you talking about? It's our song. We wrote it. Well, that can happen very easily, but I, I feel like I pay enough attention to the world around me. Like, I don't know every punk song or every song period that's come out, and I'm sure that I've written something that sounds like something else. Yes, but I consciously try to not do that. And if something sounds a little something like something else, I change it. Just... I just knocked my phone off. I change it. And, and that's just me because I want it. I would rather rip myself off and be like, okay, I've already done that. Like, but I'm going to do that again. Because if you're doing that with your own music, at the very least, you're using themes and you're, you're bending themes into something new. Um, you can take an old chair, repaint it, strip it down, repaint it, re-cushion it. And it's a new chair, even though it wasn't, you know, like you can do that. Like you can take a song that you never released, take a few parts from it, add new things to it. You can't do that with somebody else's song. Like, let me take that pink riff. Let me take that and use it as my song. And then I'm going to write new words and in other parts. But now it's my song. Like, no, that's not how I think. So. How do I find original thoughts? How do I find new ideas? By going further in my own mind. What does that mean? You know, I... I, Back to the osmosis thing. What I mean by going further in my own mind is I... It's the same way I do most things. I don't have a template unless it's just in my own mind like i write songs the way i write songs and they sound similar to each other because that's how my mind thinks that's how my mind works and i think it's the same way with metallica and all these artists that have songs that sound kind of all you know similar to each other that's how their mind works that's that's their their style you know And, and and so me the, the songs I write, that's my style. Yeah, sure, it changes and it moves and I can write a really punk song and a, a really pop song and, and, and I can write a blended one or whatever, but like there's a sound that I have and, and things like that. And that to me, I can't help it really, you know? And, and some people write and do work based on templates. They take... Here is, here's what I want to do, and I'm going to take these parts, and I'm going to put new ones to them and make it my own. Like, somebody will use a template like that. And I just, I don't do that. I just literally start from scratch with a guitar in my hand, acoustic. And a lot of times I'll have the idea already that it came up in my and I and I'll record it on a voicemail, voice memo. And I'll be like, that's a, that's maybe, okay, that's my riff. Cool, cool. And then I'll like start playing it. And then I'll be like, wait, that's a pink song. And then I'll not do that one. And I'll go, you know, change it up or I'll, I'll do something different. But, but usually it's not a pink song. Usually it's a My Carrera song and I've, I've come up with something. And out of, you know, the... F- let's say I have four ideas. One of those ideas will be sticky and it'll just keep sticking in my brain. I'll keep thinking about it. That's so for me, it's yeah, I do have inspiration somewhere out there, but I don't think about my inspiration. I don't think about it as inspiration. I let it inspire, but I'm not doing it for a reason. Um, And I think that's why artists and, and songwriters and writers in general they need to have an experience. They need to go out. Most need to go out and live something, something. Go do something. Go make something happen. Go experience something, and then you'll have something to write about. And that's 
that's how I do it. That's literally how I do it. And I think going out and living is what gives me the new ideas, is what gives me, in my mind, is where the new idea for a riff will come or this or that. And and I'm not 100% always really thinking that or even in a songwriting mode, but I kind of feel like it's uh, it's a part of life and one of the one of the secrets of life is you go out and you have your lived experience and then you can create something from that. And, and not everybody writes a song from that, but you can create something. You can build something. Maybe your lived experience is, is organizing a warehouse full of goods, supplies, and you've got a big workforce and you experience being part of having to distribute these tools and these supplies out to this workforce as part of your job or whatever you're working on. And then you, you have that experience now and say you're camping and there's a fire, Lahaina, something, and you're displaced from where you should be. And there's only so many supplies so, and there's a bunch of people. Now you've got lived experience and you can, you don't, you didn't train for that, but now you've got a better idea of how to manage the situation. That's how I write songs. I'm not training. I'm not looking at videos of how to write a song or anything like none of that. No, no, like new, new, how to inspire yourself when you're, when you don't have, you know, any ideas and blah, 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 all these like tricks and sure, if they work for you, great. I have nothing against any of that. I personally just am, maybe it's just pure laziness or just being disinterested in what other people have to say, but I, I just feel like when I'm ready to write a song, I'll write a song and you can't force inspiration. You have to live it. And then, I mean, maybe it's not, it, it's not always your own experience that you're writing about. You have to be interested in, in, in somebody else's lived experience. That could, that works too. But it's going to be from a di different perspective for sure. You know, you, you don't have the lived experience yourself, but, um, yeah, this that's that's where I get my my new ideas is just by lived experience. And I'm not saying that's for everybody because it probably takes a lot longer. It pro like that's why it's you know, MXPX is very successful, but like it's taken us thirty years. You know, we've been doing this a long time. We weren't always successful, even though we've always done well, we've always been known. Uh, we weren't always necessarily successful. Um, you could be doing really well and be broke. I mean, it's crazy, but it's true. And uh, so I appreciate you guys for those mxpx.com orders. It really helps keep us rolling. It really does. I mean, over the pandemic, that was the only thing that kept us alive. Um, we would have been on, on life support if not for you guys. So thank you as always. But uh, lived experience, man, I, I really, I, I, I live by it. I, I stand by it and... Like I said, it's my way is not the most efficient way of doing anything. That's why, you know, you see all these guru type people online trying to sell you courses and things like that. And it's just like, honestly, you wouldn't want to do it the way I've done it. It's not the most efficient. It's not the best way. It's not the easiest way, but it's the way where we're in the most control. It's the way... I mean, even even not that's probably not true. There's there's other things where we could be in more control but less successful. But there is a balance because there's sometimes you have you got to work with corporations. I mean, we do shows with Live Nation, and they clearly know how to sell tickets and they clearly know how to put on shows and do marketing and all these things. But mostly, they just have a lot of money. Like that's truly what affords them to be able to do all these things is the money. So like we can work with big money, but we can also do things on our own and we can leave that big money behind when they do something that we don't agree with. So we always kind of hold our own. That's why we put out records independently. It's not like we can't get a record deal. We can get a record deal, believe me. Um, but at the end of the day, you're just asking for a loan, a very, very high interest loan and less control. So uh, less work for you, sure. If you're lazy, go.
go ahead, sign to a label, do your thing. If you need if you need a label to like really push you, yes, sign to a label. There are reasons that that a label can get you things that uh, doing it yourself won't get you. Um, absolutely. So there, there's there's pros and cons, and we're always weighing those. And at some point, maybe we'll be too big to be independent and have to do labels. We're definitely going to be doing some labels overseas. We're not going to be able to 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 sell things in Japan like like we would do here in the U.S. It's just not the same market at all. So um, a lot to think about. But uh, when it comes down to it, you know, your way is not always the best way. But if it's right for you, that's what's important. Life is not cookie cutter. It's it, it always needs fixes. It always needs a welder. You know, we need to fix some things, man. So uh, make sure you're friends with a good mechanic, uh, a good welder, a good builder. A plumber wouldn't hurt. An electrician wouldn't certainly wouldn't hurt. You always got to have a guy or a girl for some for everything, right? That's my motto, because I sure as hell don't know how to do plumbing and electricity. I can I can flip a breaker. Let's put it that way. Um, I can run I can run a, a pigtail up a, an outlet, but um, yeah, I, I can't do a house or anything like that. So. Or a new, new, brand new project. And brand new projects are actually a little easier than, than you'd think because it all, it all kind of just fits together, and you can just run wires. And do, do, do. but if it's old stuff, that's where it gets sketchy. All right, I'm gonna stop talking. Let's get to the next one. Hey, Mike, it's Bill from Brockport, Pennsylvania, calling back in. God, I hope this don't end up being yeah. three in a row. Hey, Bill. But any chance we can get a 7-inch for Can't Keep Waiting in the Future? It's one of my favorite songs. I'd love to have a physical copy of it, be able to spin it, just enjoy it. Something to think about. I'm sure other people would love it, too. What's your thoughts? Have a good one, man. <laughs> What's up, Bill? Thanks for calling. Uh, do you want my um, artist thoughts or do you want my businessman thoughts? Uh, because they're different. My artist man says, yes, absolutely, let's do it. Um, there's there's no reason why we shouldn't do it. It's one of my favorite songs we've ever released. But the business part of me says, there's not a lot of demand for it. It's a 7-inch. You can only make so much money on a 7-inch. And it's a song that not a lot of people know. Because it's not on an album. It's a single and some singles, a lot of people know. Worries. Worries did great. Worries, um, yeah, it, it did really well. But I think by the time we hit when Can't Keep Waiting came out, the media landscape, the social media landscape had changed. Um, it had changed in a way that for some reason, and we don't understand why, the ads just didn't work. And not a lot of people listen to that song. So comparatively, I mean, plenty of people listen to it. But um, still, it's a song that I think is worth playing. We do it live. We love it. We think it's one of our better MXPX songs, I think. I mean, I think it's one of, it's one of the favorite. It's one of the songs that I love the most that I've written in the last five years. Let's just say that. Out of the new album, Let's Ride, you know, anything, you know, Stay Up All Night. I love all those songs, too. Can't Keep Waiting is right in there. It's like that, if that had come later, that would have been on this new album. Um, that's a little inside baseball. It's a little bit of just my opinion, my personal feeling about, you know, the, the reality of, you know, and another reason why we didn't do a seven inch at the time was because record plants, record pressing plants were way overburdened with projects you had a wait list of like almost a year. And so to do a seven inch after waiting a year, it was just like, ah. so I don't know. You're going to have to have some sort of campaign where you get signatures for this to happen because I don't think it's going to happen really. Maybe it'll happen in the future when we do a couple like older songs and impress some fun items that that's possible for sure. But it feels like, old news at this point, right? Um, not not that any songs are old news because 
we play all these old songs, you know, live and people love them. Punk Rock Show, you know, it's from, what, 1995, six, 1996 maybe. Um, I might be, I don't know, you know, I don't even know. So um, anyway, it, that's not what I mean by that. It's just that usually when you have products, people aren't excited about old stuff. It's kind of like, ah, but they, if it's new, they're like, okay, new. Yes, I want that new song on the new 7-inch, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then, of course, if it's like a classic, classic, people want, you know, Buffalo, the ever-passing moment. They want life in general. They want that on vinyl. Um, if we put, like, if we repressed Punk Rock Show on 7-inch, people would probably buy that. So maybe we would just do, like, Punk Rock Show and Can't Keep Waiting on a, as a B-side, and then people would buy it. You know, something like that could work. Uh, I'm not saying that's a good idea, though. I mean, that, that's, uh, I don't think we would ever do that. I think we try to keep things making sense, like arrow-wise and, and all this stuff. But it's not a bad idea, Bill. And, and for you, I'd do almost anything, almost anything, including that. But I can't guarantee it. All right. What's next? Hey, uh, Mike, it's uh, Josh Jones uh, back in town again uh, a couple of days ago, and I'm, like, listening to the podcast again, trying to catch up. Right now I'm on the the vault one, I think. I'm about a few minutes into that. And uh, um, I've just been listening to him, and I had so many ideas, like, oh, I should call in and mention this, that, this, and that. Um, but uh, honestly, I just thought uh, we were talking about, like, the festival season, so I had kind of a story that I wanted to tell you about. Um, back in 2005 during the Warp Tour, that was my actual first opportunity to see you guys play. Um, and me and a couple of friends, we got in this uh, old, I think it was a Lincoln Town Car, like 80s Lincoln Town Car, and drove there. Uh, we had, I think, 60 bucks uh, between the three of us, just enough uh, to get a hotel and, like, get water at the show, which... We didn't think like, oh man, water's going to be so expensive. We were able to buy like two bottles of water there because they're like five bucks a piece. Uh, but we made it there. We made it home. Uh, it was a pretty cool experience. We got to see you guys. Um, I trade you, Reliant K, a few, a few other bands. Um, but yeah, uh, like festivals are awesome. We had to drive like, I don't know, four hours to Detroit, four hours back. Um, this is, um, maybe I neglected to say this is back in Michigan. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun then. Hopefully, um, I haven't checked yet to see if you have tickets left for, um, the Seattle show. I really hope they're there because I want to buy them and go <laughs> there, uh, to see you guys play. Um, uh, and there was one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, I think that you, you might get a kick out of it. Um, so the thing I do with my job is I'm in charge of, um, navigation. Right, where we go go two places and 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 back and forth, right? And we have uh, these plans that we that we follow, and we put names on them. So this uh, this time we went out, and everything was MXPX themed, and everyone's like, "What is that? What is that?" Few people knew, right? But I made them uh, like just kind of kept them um, on the cusp of things, not really giving out too many details. Um, but we used uh, uh, on the way back. It was slowly going the way um of the bama right but like they're like what's that and i'm like well it's a play on words for um you know uh, a band that i really like and they're like well what is it like well we're trying to figure it out and no one can figure it out um that's kind of funny but anyways um that's that i'm almost at three minutes so i'm gonna let you go um peace thanks mike <laughs> and then no one can figure it out <laughs> all right thanks josh uh, i love it um, 2005 Warp Tour. That was fun. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I love that you're using MXPX themes to navigate the U.S. Navy. Keep up the good work, sir. Keep up the good work. Give me the limit. Yo, what's up, baller? My name is Michael. I just wanted to say, I guess, like, you know, good morning to you, even though it's I'm in Connecticut. It's like... 8.30, 9 o'clock here. So it's like, what, fucking 
there for you, but, well, yeah, you're probably awake, dog. Good morning. 5.30. But I just wanted to say to everybody else, fuck all the before everything and after haters, yo. That one rules. Granted, I was like eight years old when it came out, so I guess I wasn't like around to be like, oh man, they were making like harder punk, and now they're making like more sensible punk with like, I, I don't know, poppier? Like, I feel like like the album's poppier, but like, regardless, fuck the haters. <laughs> Peace, dog. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's like my old self called me. <laughs> To, t- to tell me that. <laughs> All right. Hey, you know what? I think there's not a whole lot of need to comment on that. I agree with you, Michael. I agree with you. And yeah, more sensible punk. Sure, sure. Kind of insulting in a way, but it's insulting. It's like I insulted myself, right? Like <laughs> more sensible, man. You're right. Uh, but at the same time, like, I'm not always a sensible person, but I want to, I want to sing what feels good. Ah, uh, that's why I write what I write, you know, on the outs, pictures shattered on the floor, you know, whatever I'm saying there, like, I'm just, I'm talking about a relationship of somebody I knew, not my own. And it just seemed like they were always at odds, just like, boom, 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 boom. And I was imagining when they finally break up, what was going to happen. And that was the song. So, like, a lot of times I write things hypothetically, like, okay, I see this in the future. I don't know, you call me a seer? Would you would, would that qualify? A seer? But uh, a singing seer? Um, I... <laughs> Singing seer. That's creepy. Um, That's just how I write a lot of times. Like I have an idea and I just go for it. So some of that record before everything and after is me just having an idea and just thinking about what it might end up being. So it's not a real story of a real thing. It's a real story of a real person and real people. But the, what happens in it is not real. So, yeah, that's, that's that's real dog. All right, Michael, appreciate it. I love that you were like eight when this album came out, before everything and after. Uh, wonder what you think about the new album. Uh, call in, let me know, find a way home. Let's get to one last voicemail, and I'll let you guys uh, get on with the rest of your week. Hey, this message is for uh, the MXPX HR department. I, I think this is the right number. This is uh, Bob. I edit and produce for the Micro Air podcast. I, I, I just wanted to, just I don't know, get some feedback. I guess it's some some weird things have happened with Mike. Uh, one night he called me, and, and it was like three o'clock in the morning. How dare you? Well, and so I thought something was wrong, and he and I was like, Hey, what's going on? And he just goes, Boy, you're round. And it just hangs up. I, I don't. I don't know if it was like a joke or. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, like one day he sends me a, a text message. It's, it's like a link to an article, and it's about how SlimFast is uh, EBT compatible, like like food stamps. And then a follow up message that says, "Because you're fat and poor." <laughs> Screenshots. I I, I, it's you know it's 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 hurtful. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to handle it. I mean, I, I'm grateful for the opportunity he's given me, but but man, it's just it's a lot sometimes, you know. I'm not sure if I hurt his feelings. I'm not. I don't know. I really could uh, use some feedback. Maybe he's just being friendly. I'm not sure, but but it hurts sometimes, you know. It just hurts. Uh, anyways, it's Bob. Um, thanks for the help. Are you done, Bob? Are you done? Thanks. That was our first prank call ever. But let's say let's say it's serious. Let's say I'm a Lizzo fan, and I love not only her songs, but I love everything about her, even the way she treats her employees. Now, allegedly, because she probably treats them just fine, I'm sure, because people complain about silly things. 
Don't they, Bob? Don't they? Like I said, I need those receipts. I would love for you to share those with me to see where I texted you and said you were around. <laughs> are you around? Maybe I asked if you were around and you took it as, are you a round, like a round person? Wow. I'm surprised at you, Bob. I'm surprised that after all these years, after all we've been through together, you have the audacity to me too, me, me too, me, <laughs> me too, me, <laughs> the singing seer, me too no, say it isn't so, all right, all right, all right, um, Bob, I wish it was true, I wish I actually was that mean, because I'd probably be so much more successful, my God, everybody says I'm down to earth, everybody says I'm a nice guy, Nothing pisses me off more than me called a nice guy. I do not want to be called a nice guy. I'm nice. I'm a nice person, but I'm not a nice guy. Like, sure, I'm down to earth. I'm close to the earth. What am I supposed to be like? Look at somebody and go like, F you. <laughs> you know, like I, I, people that love my band and my music or the podcast or anything that I do come up and say hi, and I say hi back. I'm a monster. I am a monster. And I'm sorry. Okay? All right. <sighs> Make sure you guys get in your uh, complaints into the podcast. 360-830-6660. Leave me a voicemail. I'll get it. Send it to the HR department. I'll still get it. And uh, <laughs> there is no HR department, by the way. Um so, Bob, uh, I wish you would have just came to me personally instead of airing our dirty laundry on the podcast. Very disappointed in you. Um, but you're not fired because I need somebody to edit the podcast. So we will still have a podcast next week, everybody. Music Monday is coming up. You know what? He Now that I think of it, he has dropped the ball on quite a few things. We used to have this this link where he would put all the new Music Monday submissions into this page. It's probably not needed because I did it with, it wasn't updated. I went to the group, did it myself. All right. Okay, I get it. But at the same time, it's like, how much time would I save if I didn't have to do it myself? Right? Right? Bob? Bob? I need to have Bob on to, Bob back on to make a case for his job and why why I should keep him. What do you guys think? Write me in the comments. Um, make sure you subscribe, rate, review the, the podcast. Would appreciate that. And uh, tell me, call in and tell me, or even write in on the Facebook page. Tell me what you think about the Bob situation. What? How should I respond? Is he fired or should I give him a raise? All right. Peace out, everybody. Much love to you all. Next week, like I said, new Music Monday episode. All right, cheers. Cheers.